Starting for 30, previewing the Maryland-Illinois game this week, uh, Sunday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. They bring the Maryland Terrapins are coming to town, and we've got Scott Green from the Maryland Rivals site who's going to join us today. Um, Scott, you've had a chance to see your Maryland team play quite a bit this season, obviously, and what are you, uh, what have you seen from them? Yeah, I mean, you know, you look at the out-of-conference schedule, you know, uh, things look good. You know, they were shooting at a incredible clip, you know, nearly 60% from the field for the first, I think, four or five games. Uh, really shared the ball. We're hitting a lot from three. Um, playing small ball because obviously they have to with the roster the way it is. But, um, you know, then kind of Big Ten play. Well, actually, first Clemson came, <clears throat> struggled with their size, physicality. And then Big Ten play came and uh, it's just been more of the same. You know, it's just been tough for this team with this roster. It's kind of, you know, light on a point at point guard, um, heavy at, on the wing, but then no real bigs, you know, to, to play inside. So it's really been a struggle. Um, you know, they've lost three in a row now. They did get that win at, at Wisconsin. So, you know, they have the capabilities, but it's been tough, you know, doing it night in, night out. I was kind of looking at their Pomeroy numbers, you know, Ken Palm, and they, they're still ranked like 21st in offensive efficiency. Does that kind of harken back to, to the, the preseason games when they were making 60% of their shots? Winning heavily there? Yeah, I think it's a couple of things. I, yeah, I think one, I think, you know, the fact that they were making shots at such a high clip in the, the preseason has something to do with it. And also, you know, they play at a bit of a slower pace. Um, and, you know, in Big Ten play, they've had these droughts where they go five, six minutes. But at the same time, you know, they'll also get red hot at times as well. So, um, you know, they're still shooting the ball fairly well in Big Ten play. And I think the pace of play has also kind of helped with the offensive efficiency. Yeah, that's uh, they, they do have some athletic wings. There's no question they've got some nice athletic wings, some guys that can get to the rim. But in this Big Ten that we see this year with the big men that we have, you know, whether it's Luca Garza, it, it's really hard to play without an inside presence. Um, and uh, is that kind of been a, the biggest issue for them? Yeah, I mean, obviously you look at the Purdue game, you know, you got Trayvon Williams, you got another several footer you got to deal with. You look at – you know, their last game, you got Luca Garza going off for 20 plus points. And, you know, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, it's tough. And then, you know, now coming up, you got to deal with Coburn. And I mean, it's just, it's kind of never ending, you know, Indiana, I think was the one game where you know, they really didn't have to deal with one, a big presence inside, but you know, you look at Trace Jackson Davis and even he's a, a tough guy inside, even though he doesn't have that size necessarily. So, um, and, you know, he was asked about it after this last game, um, after Garza kind of went off and they, the rails kind of fell off against Iowa and, you know, he was pretty emphatic saying that Shoal, Shoal Muriel is not the guy, you know, he's not going to be the guy inside, even though he's seven, two with that seven foot wingspan. And, you know, he kind of, kind of threw Galen Smith under the bus as well, the Alabama transfer. So, uh, I mean, at this point, it seems like he's pretty much ready to ride small ball the rest of the way. <laughs> It's, it's, I get, you know, if you shoot the ball well from three, I guess you can ride it, but uh, it's, it's tough. And um, it, is Mar Maryland's one of the Tertians had some, you know, I actually got to cover him against Illinois when he was at Wichita state. Um, so, you know, I've seen him, seen his teams for a long time. He's had some really good big 10 regular season success over the years. I mean, I think they've been over the last, what is it? Eight years. They've been over 500, um, like seven yep. of eight years coming into this year. Yep. Um, and, and they've, you know, 12 and 12 and six, 14 and six, 13 and seven, just constantly in the mix there in that top four or five. Hasn't really made an NCAA tournament run yet. And really, obviously this year has been a struggle. What's his, what's his, what's it like for him there at Maryland? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like you said, and, and, I'll, I'll start with this. I feel bad for the guy. Last year was kind of the year, you know, they knew they had the pieces. They knew they had the two superstars at point guard and center. Um, it was the year that they were supposed to make a deep run. And I think a lot of the off season things they were planning were kind of predicated on the deep run. And then COVID happened. Yeah. And I think, you know, when COVID happened, some stuff that maybe they thought was going to happen in the off season didn't. And now you're left with what you see now. Um, but, you know, it's, it's like you said, I mean, they've had some great teams in regular season. You look at some of those teams, the Mellow Trimble and, you know, guys like Rashid Suleiman, that team. Um, you know, they've had some big guys like Diamond Stone that had some success. And, you know, last year's team with Jalen Smith and Anthony Cowan. But 
Um, it, it's just tough. I mean, and for whatever reason, you know, I don't know, but they just struck out with pretty much every point guard that they were looking to get last year. And they were going to try and go the transfer route, the grad transfer route for the big man. And for whatever reason, they just seem to strike out with everyone there too. And that's how you get left with what they have now. And it's, it's like you said, I mean, they've got guys that can shoot the three. They've got some really good athletic wings. You know, if they get hot from three and they move the ball, they're capable of making you have to do some things and, and beating you. But it's just so hard night in, night out when you don't have that big guy that can, you know, just pound the ball inside of this league. Yeah, they've uh, that that obviously is difficult, especially this year. I mean, in the Big Ten, uh, you've been covering the Big Ten for a while now. Um, have you seen a team a uh, league this deep? I mean, obviously, you know, we're, they're talking. At one point, there were nine teams ranked in the top twenty-five. Um, it, it's about as maybe there's, and I guess Iowa, Illinois, maybe there's some Michigan. There's some teams that are in top ten reach range, but maybe there's not a team that's like Gonzaga or Baylor. But there are there's depth. I mean, every every night it's tough in the big 10 this year. I mean, like you said, I think Gonzaga is just on a, they're just a totally different level, but below that. Yeah. It's like you said, you got Iowa, you got, I mean, even Michigan state, who I guess was what preseason top five, top 10, you know, they've dipped a little bit, but now they're starting to, you know, look better again. And you know, is is going to have them there in March. Um, but you know, I mean, outside of Nebraska, this league, anyone can beat anyone on any given night. And I, it's probably, yeah, I think it's by far the toughest I've seen. I don't think there's any doubt about it. I don't know if you watched the Illinois game, but it, it may have shown the Big Ten well the other night. Northwestern, they're down 15 at half and win by 25. And yep. I, I don't think I've seen two halves switch like that. It's almost in the Big Ten, like it can go from night to night like that. Usually it doesn't happen exactly. at halftime, though. Um, right. But uh, so Maryland is, um, you know, just talking, looking at them, they they went in, in conference play. They've, they've struggled a little bit maybe to to – get stops when they need them and they haven't shot the ball quite as well. Is that just because the scouting and defenses are better? Or is there something they're not doing right now? I mean, if you talk to Turgeon, he says he's just not getting through to the guys. Um, whether that's ball movement, not running the plays. Uh, and I, and I will say this, you know, the last couple of games, you know, Morsell, he's a senior, um, Darren Morsell, the senior guard who plays on the wing. And, you know, he's kind of their defensive stopper. Um, he got hit in the face and had facial surgery a couple, few, maybe maybe a week or so ago, uh, missed a game, came back the last game, probably wasn't quite ready. Um, so, you know, they've kind of been without him the past couple of games, but, you know, it's just tough, especially when you're missing your defensive stopper and you're going up against top 10 team night after night after night. Um, so, you know, I, and he said it, you know, they just need to dig in and do what they need to do defensively. But for me, the biggest thing is just these offensive droughts where they go five, six, seven, eight minutes. And the, the reality is, especially when you have a small ball lineup like that, you just you can't have those kind of droughts in a league like this and expect to win. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. It's it's tough. I mean, if you go four or five minutes out scoring, you're, you're probably in trouble. I mean. Uh, so is, is Maryland, I mean, what do you see? Uh, is their recruiting class coming in? How, how are they, the 2021 kids that they have signed? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure you probably know, but, you know, maybe some people out there don't. But, you know, John Graham, who was a four-star wing forward um, out of Wisconsin, you know, he actually came in early, played his first minutes actually the other night um, against Iowa, or excuse me, two, two games ago. Um, so, you know, they're kind of getting him into the mix, but obviously, you know, a high school kid coming in literally yeah. like a week ago, it's going to take him some time to get acclimated. Um, but, you know, I think he's going to be a good one. Um, you know, he had a really good summer. Um, then you look at, you know, they've got Julian Reese, a kid coming in from St. Francis in Baltimore. It's a really powerful program. Um, I really like what I've seen from him. He's really stepped things up. Um, that said, he's the kind of big that I think it's probably going to take him a year maybe to get acclimated. Um, and, and I like, you know, the guards they have coming in as well, but unfortunately, again, it seems like in 21, um, you know, they've got Ike Cornish. He's a guard from Baltimore. who's was actually playing high school ball down South Carolina. Um, really good three point shooter, you know, can really drive from the wing. Um, just, just a scoring guard. who can shoot it. But again, the, unfortunately the same issues is arising in that, you know, they still need to find a, a pure kind of pass first type point guard. And they still need to find a guy that can, you know, a dominant big that can really, you know, eat up space in the paint. And so far, unfortunately, right now, they don't have either in the class. 
So maybe more of the same next year. I, um, I, I really, I will say this last year, I really enjoyed watching that Maryland team play with Cowan and Smith. They were, they were, you know, they had the athletic wings to go with the big guy and the, the yep. point guard. And, and that was really a fun team to watch. And I thought they were poised to make a run in the NCAA tournament if we'd had it. So hopefully this year we're going to get an NCAA tournament, probably going to be tough for Maryland to get there this year from where they're at right now. It's going to take, uh, putting things together, but, um, but uh, hopefully we'll get to watch an NCAA tournament this year in 2021. What are your thoughts on the, uh, the moving everything to Indianapolis? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's not a bad idea. I mean, I, as you've seen, you know, they've got the facilities. You know, you got him. I mean, you got everything. You got ankle. You got, you know, the football stadium, the Pacers arena. So, I mean, there's plenty of, and, you know, and as you know, high school gyms out there, you know, they can seat like yeah. 10,000. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you don't see that most places. So I actually think it's a smart move um, and hopefully it'll help them get through the whole tournament. I mean, cause like you said, I think we all want to see it. I mean, I, I was the worst thing. I mean, I'm a, I'm a guy, my birthday's in March. Like I like, I like spring break. I like going skiing. I like going to the casino to gamble. Like you can't, you can't do any of that stuff when there's no March madness. So oh, I like everyone. I wanted to come back and I want it here. Yeah. Well, I agree. Well, hopefully 2021 is going to be that year where we get to watch an NCAA tournament. Um, and uh, what do you expect to see tomorrow night from Maryland and Illinois? You have any uh, predictions? I mean, <laughs> I want to say Maryland's going to win, but unfortunately what I think I see is Kofi Coburn, excuse me, Kofi Coburn kind of going off just like Garza maybe did a little bit. Um, and, you know, they got these, their guards are so hard to stop. You know, you look at, um, Io, you look at you know Corbella. I mean, they're just they're loaded at the guard spot, and then you got Coburn. You got to deal with in the post. Um, so I think Maryland can come out. I think they can make a game of it early, but I just think you know their size inside and their depth at the guard spot is just going to make it really tough for Maryland. Yeah, it's a. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, the one interesting thing about these two teams, you put them together, you'd have something really, really special because Maryland has those – Illinois probably lacks that <laughs> yeah. athletic wing, that they need an yep. athletic wing. So um, you'd have something pretty good. Well, hey, Scott, thanks a lot for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Um, look forward to uh, the game tomorrow night, and uh, hopefully we can keep uh, – we'll keep following you on uh, Terrapin Nation, and we'll uh, stay in touch. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Brad.